Howdy folks, it's, yes, it's time for some Viver, new Vivor. <laughs> yeah, this is a 130 MIG welder, uh, runs on 110, and it's it's new. They, they tell me this is the new generation, it's an update from whatever they had before. I haven't had it out of the box yet, I've opened the box and peeked inside a little bit, but we're going to get it out on the box. As soon as we get this big box from Viver and set it aside where we'll have more room here, we'll put everything on the bench and we'll take a quick look and then we're going to run this bad boy. Well, I got a surprise. Yes, this was, I have to change my title. I got to change everything on this video, apparently, right from the get-go, because apparently I didn't know what I had. The gal over at Vivor said the MiG-130. And I was like, okay, yeah, you know, sounds great. Let's talk about the machine and, you know, send it over and we'll do a review, check the specs, run it on the welding bench and the things. I just play with it. It sounds great. And it's a 110 machine, which just plugs into an outlet, which a lot of people do like having that option and not having to worry about having, you know, 220 or whatever. But anyways, this thing came in, I started to unbox it, and I was, oh, there's the ground, you know, okay. And then I saw this, uh, this is for stick welding. Well, why is this in here in the box? And then I looked at this and I was like, this is for TIG welding. Where's the, where's the MIG? Well, inside, they had packed the MIG cable as well. So. Okay, so I got the numbers. The numbers are 130 amp. The deal is, the paperwork on this is actually theoretically it's for the older machine. It's not for the brand new machine because the uh, numbers that was shown in here was a little bit behind, but that's fine. You know, like I said, I use 80, 90 amp usually, roughly, for my stick. And uh, the MIG, same thing, you know, I run in that uh, 80 amp range usually. Uh, so this is a 3 in 1 machine. So, in other words, for a very low, very low price, you can have MIG, TIG, and stick welder all-in-one, three-in-one machine at an extremely low price, 110 volts, you can plug it in and run it without any special hookups or anything like that. So it's got a lot of great things going on for it. And I think we're gonna try also, before I forget, uh, they say this one has some kind of new technology that uh, adds to the stability of the burn. So you'll have a very stable uh, welding burn when you're arcing, so we'll see. We're going, we're going to test and find out how good it is. <laughs> yeah. But in the meantime, uh, the MIG is already hooked up and connected, which I see. But you also have positive and negative over here. So this is where you can run your ground from, depending on whether you're running. If you're running flux core, which is another, well, that's another point I better make right away. Yeah, this is going to be flux core only. This does not take gas. At least I hope it doesn't because uh, there's no gas hookup back here at all. And I just I had to look for that actually because I wasn't even sure. You know, I saw, I saw the gas thing on here. Like, Whoa, wait a minute. Oh, uh, no. So uh, let's get on the welding bench and let's uh, let's do a stick job, but let's uh, let's run a nice long bead. This would be the uh, this would be the first pass, I guess, just to try something and just see what we got. Uh, just turn it on. Using this button here, I have selected the stick welder. I don't hear a fan running just yet. I'm kind of curious about that, but uh, we'll find out here in a second. I guess we get hot. Let's see how we do. Whoa, that's hot. Okay. Fan, cooling fan's not running at all yet. I'm just wondering if there's any problem, but I don't hear any fan running, but boy, that was, that got actually too hot. That was actually too much heat. Wow, we. And I'll even, uh, I'll even use a little knockoff thing here to kill the flag. There you go. Wow. Let's see if we can get you in a, Really quick, just take a quick look at that. Yeah, that's a nice steady bead. And if you're wondering which bead we're talking about, it's that nice shiny one that's uh, that's hot right there, right now. Oh yeah, I can still feel the heat coming off. I just about went through because I slowed down a little bit and tried to really, you know, just hump along and just see how it would do. But uh, it's very steady, it's rock solid, and at a 110 volt machine, I hate to say it, but that is very impressive. That is amazing. Absolutely amazing. 
Okay, a couple of things about this I wanted to just mention. In the camera, the weld looks kind of flat. It's not. It has a nice arky, you know, hump to it coming through where I did the ran the bead. Uh, also, the bead was very, it, it was very steady like it said it would be. Very stable, uh, very predictable. You know, I really, I hate to say it, uh, for a 110 machine, I usually don't like them. This thing is actually really good. Uh, it's again, it's a do-it-yourself or hobbyist type machine or you know small repair around the farm, whatever. So it's not a professional machine, obviously that you're going to go out and run great big long, you know, 30 foot long bead of weld. No, I, that I would say no, this is not the machine for you. <laughs> but it's working great. Now, a uh, couple of things bothering me right now this morning. So far, the cooling fan has not gone off, and it's cold in here. It's 60 whatever degrees, so I'm not sure about the cooling fan on the system. I've sent a message over to Beaver about it, just asking. This is, a, like I say, a new generation of their machines, and this is the new 3-in-1 machine, so it's like, you don't know. Uh, it might be that it runs on thermostat, and we haven't gotten hot enough to run it. Uh, the other thing that did happen, and again, I sent a message over to let them know, the wire shipped with the machine was one millimeter, uh, MIG wire, which in terms of US, that would be uh, 0.35 wire. The tip that comes with the machine is the, uh, is the 0.8 millimeter or uh, 0.30, a smaller, lighter wire. So I couldn't get the wire through and, and I discovered quickly what was going on was the tip was the wrong size. So I have a tip for one millimeter in my uh, supply. So I went ahead and switched it out on that and set that up. Now, I am going to recommend uh, with a smaller machine like this, it's generally better, especially with the 110 machines, run the 0 0.30, the lighter, smaller wire, if you're going to use a MIG. Don't, I wouldn't recommend using the heavy stuff, although this machine theoretically can run that heavier wire. Uh, I will put a uh, link in the description below where you can find this. It's right around $125. It is an unbelievably great price for a machine that does MIG, TIG and stick welding, you know, and do it this well, this is this is crazy. I, I'm, a, I'm a little blown away with this. Now, I'm going to run the MIG. Uh, we'll run right beside this bead, I guess, with the MIG wire and see how we do with it. Uh, as soon as we get set up, i got to go find my helmet. Okay, time for the MIG wire. Let's have a look and see how she does. Wow, I had to say that. <laughs> For a 110 machine, that is impressive. Now, if we can get the slag knocked out of here, we'll see how we do. <laughs> oh, the slag is coming off easy. Another pretty weld. Holy wow. Technology and it's a little too hot, so I can't touch it right now. Wow, well, I brought this back over to the bench because we're going to talk about you know who this is for and how good it works and stuff. But also, I'm going to provide a link in the description below where you can find this baby at VMware. It's around $125 price tag, it's just but it's new, it's it's the updated version from VMware, and for a three in one machine. It's just, it's actually just, it's just a smoker. I cannot get over the performance I just got out of this thing. And the very first thing I'm going to talk about, if you're not familiar with welding or too much about it, uh, this is just a 110 plug. You know, this just plugs into a regular outlet. And I was, I would recommend a heavy, like a 20 amp outlet as opposed to a 15 if you, if you can, if you can get there. Also, uh, don't use extension cords. And, you know, if you do use an extension cord, expect performance to go, you know, downhill pretty quick. Uh, the longer the cord, of course, the more problems you're going to have. And the extension cord had better be a good heavy-duty one. <laughs> yeah, because you're going to be pulling some current with this bad boy when you're welding, you know. The welding side of it, let's talk about the stick for a second. Uh, again, if you're not familiar with it, that's that stick I use is a 1.8. That's a little heavy for, uh, again, a 110 machine. I'll keep referring to this 110 thing because I really did not expect the kind of performance that I saw today. It was like it... It, it used that stick like there was like it was a 220 good heavy unit. In fact, I had lots of power up here. I could have dialed it up or down more. I probably could have dialed it down lower than what I had. I had suggested running 90 amps would be you know plenty. That's 80, 90 is usually my my favorite there. 
Uh, with the MIG, you probably could dial down to about 40 or something. I was at 60 and I realized after I started the burn, it was like, I've got too much heat. I could actually lower this. Now, there's a couple caveats, of course. When you're paying that little for a machine, you know, what are you missing? Uh, it's a light duty machine, so it's only gonna have, now the book says, yeah, the book says 30, 30% 30 I think uh, duty on it, which basically means uh, three hour, uh, three minutes, say just an example, three minutes of welding, you should let the machine cool down for seven, you know, uh, in, in a 10 minute interval. So yeah, it's, it is what it is. Now, uh, obviously it only takes a two pound spool. You cannot put the big spool in here. It's a real nice simplified uh, clamp system to put the wire through and put the latch up, tighten it down a little bit. Don't over tighten if you can because you really only want a little bit of spring pressure on the wheels to drive the MIG wire through. You don't want to be crushing, especially with flux core because uh, it has a tendency to, you can actually leak the gas out if you crush the wire too much. But uh, it has the variable here with the uh, grounds, so you just hook your ground up to your positive side for your table or whatever the workload is, and run your MIG wire and you know start welding. Awesome machine. Now there's no speed control, so the wire comes out at a consistent speed, which seems to work just fine. I, I'm a little shocked over that. The uh, it, it fed the wire exactly as I needed it. So like. You know, kudos to Vivor for this machine. This is this is amazing. Um, like I said, I cut the current back to 60, and I probably could have went 50 or even maybe 40 or something. But the, see, the MIG wire uh, in this case was one millimeter or uh, 0 0.35. And again, I generally in the past have never recommended that heavy of MIG wire because it's a 110 machine. But it ate that wire up like there was nothing. Like, no big deal. Uh, the TIG, uh, we're not going to be demonstrating the TIG because we don't have anything to TIG today with. We have all the TIG stuff here except the uh, rod. I don't have any of the TIG wire uh, rods to do TIG welding with, but uh, I have full confidence that, that thing will, this thing will blow my mind on the TIG as well. We just can't do it right now. But And for me, the main feature of this machine is to have a, a, a decent MIG weld out of a machine. And I have always supported the idea to get a 220 machine, don't even touch those 110s. This might have, this has really changed my mind. Uh, I have never seen a 110 have that kind of heat, that kind of power and stability to run welds with the heavier wire, the heavier rod and everything for the stick. It's like, I haven't seen that before. So this is really an incredible machine for a very low, very, very low price and more than competitive because I looked around and I really couldn't find anything on the market. Now I've had uh, MIG 130s in here before and they did not, they couldn't perform like this. They just did not. And they were brand new. Uh, I've also had the uh, Harbor Freight Century, uh, a 110 Century in here and a uh, Hobart 110. They could not perform the way this little guy did and I think it's the uh, it's the capacitors the built-in electronics the is is all part of that design of for running the surge through and everything it's just it is amazing how much output this thing has now granted it's not going to run a great big long job it's not designed for that it is designed for the do-it-yourselfer or the repair on a farm uh, at home whatever uh, a small metal job that you're putting together something and you're stitching it up you need a welder or you need a MIG welder or you even want to go TIG this will do it at an incredibly low price what an awesome machine now besides the two pound spool uh, what else can we say about it? The ground is excellent. Uh, I've noticed all of Viva machines seem to come in like this. Normally in the past with the old other uh, brand name welders, a lot of times you would cut the ground off and put a good one on because they what they shipped with the machine was junk, you know. Uh, Vivor has over and over again surprised me with these. They're really nice because they've got this uh, nice copper bus, you know, flexible running through here. They got copper tabs on both sides here to make good contact electrically and a nice contact here with the cable going up through to the ground. So the ground is actually, this is as good a ground as anything I could put on the machine. Uh, so there's no reason to cut this off and change it or anything like that, which is really, really good. I'm surprised. The uh, MIG handle is totally usable. Uh, the shield, you know, everything on here is great. In fact, because it's a flux core machine, only the cable's not as bulky or as uh, difficult to deal with, which is actually kind of a good thing. 
Uh, also the stick. The stick is, again, this is the, uh, I don't, again, I don't like these. I, I like the industrial kind of ones, but this has got a good, strong grab to it. And it held the uh, stick with no problem at all with the clamp because it's good and strong. So again, not an issue. Uh, lengthwise, not that great. It's, you know, good enough. The machine will have to be pretty close by in order to do any kind of welding. That's just, you know, it is what it is, as they say. But uh, overall, I just, I tell you, I am I smoked with this thing because I did not expect the performance out of it. Now, uh, wire-wise, I am going to recommend uh, if you're a new a new guy and you're a beginner or something, you might want to use the point. Uh, was it the three zero point three zero uh, wire with a one ten machine in general? Anyways, that's always been kind of a rule with me, but. Uh, this one sort of broke the rules today, but uh, I use uh, Blue uh, Demon uh, is what is my favorite flux core, which is a gasless, you know, wire. It the gas is supported inside the wire and is supplied. And I like flux core because you can have a nice cooling fan blowing on you, or you can be outside in really windy conditions, and the flux core will perform very, very well over a gas-fed machine. I have totally walked away from gas machines. I, I don't even bother with it anymore. And like I have a, another machine here that is, uh, can use gas and I don't have, I have it hooked up as a flux core machine. So yeah, you know, but as a 110 machine, I uh, would, I would say with the 030, even though what I just saw, I had way more than enough heat, you know, to work with that heavier, uh, MIG wire. So that's, it's just it's just mind-blowing you know it just is so anyways i will provide a link below for this and uh some of that wire that i rec highly recommend for flux core wiring uh the situation with the uh stick however i generally run 70 uh, 14 or 70 18 are my two favorite general purpose kind of rods for steel welding and uh the other thing i've got here i don't have and it's my fault is i sort of wanted to do this uh Maybe sometime in the future, if we get a chance, we'll try it out, but I don't need to do it right now. But the, the if you want really pretty, beautiful looking weld, uh, a TIG does an awesome job on, on it just does. It, it's, a, it's a pretty weld. But for you guys, for me, you know, we're, we're kind of, you know, rough welders. Uh, sometimes we have to grind the weld off and start over again because, you know, we're not, we're not welding every day. It's not our profession or something. So, yeah, uh, stick is just fine, you know. And I do love the option option here of running sticks. I do. I I'm an old stick guy from way back. I run stick forever. But between the price, the features, uh, and the technology, that's really what this is about. This is modern technology using uh, capacitive systems with a big coil in there. I took the machine apart and took a quick look at it. You know. But uh, my big question was the cooling fan thing, and I still don't have an answer on that. So I'm not sure about that. Hopefully it's a thermostat system and the machine just didn't even get hot enough to run that cooling fan. I'm hoping, otherwise we fried everything in there. <laughs> it's still working, so as long as it keeps running, I guess we're okay. <laughs> Last thing, uh, this is typical. I don't care who's you buy, they always give these crappy little ones, but this is actually a little bit better than some of the junk that usually comes with some of the smaller machines. So this little hammer thing, uh, you know, for knocking the slag off and cleaning the weld is it's not half bad it's it works but yeah uh the other the other thing i'm i guess they included these goggles and i i highly recommend uh just i don't know set them aside and uh maybe give them to your kid for you know spend a little bit of money and get yourself a decent welding helmet uh one like this this is a auto shade helmet uh which means i can see through it in the daylight until it starts the weld up. Once it starts to weld, it goes dark, so it doesn't hurt my eyes. But for the, the mangy 30, 40, 50 dollars, whatever, it's the safety factor is amazing. I mean, you really should have something decent for whenever you're welding. This thing has really kind of changed my mind that maybe a 110 machine can do uh, just, you know, basic jobs around the place. Uh, Consumer-wise, I would say the farms or commercial, small commercial atmospheres or do-it-yourself shops like my own where you've got a little bit of welding to do every once in a while, this will get you through the job and at a very low cost and it'll do, as, it'll do a professional job. It's, um, 
it's just I can't get over this machine. Well, there's a pretty picture. I just set it up on my welding cart with the plasma cutter. So just think, we have four machines here right now. Plasma cutter, MIG, TIG, and stick machines all together on top of the cart. And it all fits really nicely. This opens on this side so it won't interfere with it. And the other thing that was really cool here with this particular cart was uh, the airline that has to come in here comes in from this side. So nothing interferes with anything and we've got the cables all separated and all that so it looks really well organized hey thank you for watching coffee and tools please like share and subscribe ring the notice bell and we'll be back with more stuff coming up oh yeah see you then be good